more about beneficial ownership of trusts and other structures. I mean, Germany, after the, the Panama Papers have broken, Germany's come out and said that each country should have a register of beneficial ownership of these various structures. Uh, every country that is a tax jurisdiction, and then of course should have the automatic and free exchange of information. Now, once again, that sounds simple in theory. Um, how easy would it be for Australia to set up a, a, a private, if not a public, register of beneficial ownership of these kind of uh, structures? Can I maybe just touch on a couple of points first before we get to the register, which is that Australia's got quite a comprehensive withholding tax regime on distributions from trusts. If they and pay tax, yeah. Well, so the trust itself will not pay tax, but if it mm. distributes money offshore, we get to tax at a punitive tax rate. And so Australian trusts are not particularly good vehicles for tax avoidance or indeed Australia's not a great jurisdiction. If you're going to be an inter-global tax evader, Australia's not a great place to come in. But the, so we have got a lot of withholding tax there on the, on the border. We also have powers to require people to tell us the ultimate beneficial owner as a revenue authority. That means that we're, I think, quite comfortable that we're getting the tax from Australian trusts. Now, what about now for, other, for other things, for things which are not tax, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, is it not? We're a tax administrator. Yep. And so I think a, a, having some sort of public register of ownership of trusts is, is a, I mean, it's a policy question, it's a question for government. But what I would say is that uh, the problem that I would see as a tax administrator is finding out the beneficial owner of companies elsewhere rather than finding out the beneficial ownership of companies in Australia. Companies elsewhere that may have subsidiaries in Australia. Oh, okay, so can I again make another distinction? Sure. So for large market, which is my, my space, these entities are being used for their low tax rates. They're not being used to hide the entities. So, you know, they are, I, I think there's, there was a piece of work done by, by one of the advocacy groups, which listed the haven or low tax rate jurisdiction entities used by most of the, Australia, most of the multinationals. You know, they're on the public record. Then they are not using these entities to hide money. No, they, they, might be use it. they might be using them in tax planning, they might be using them for good commercial reasons, but they're not using them to hide money. It's the evasion end, the, the individual end, where they're being used for evasion. Well, I think this is a general comment, this evasion end at individuals, like fraud is now illegal, right? I mean, th these people are committing fraud, it's a criminal act, mm. and uh, so no, there's no silver bullet law here, is, I suppose. If you really, really want to commit fraud, you, you will go to great lengths to to do it. So we just need to be a little bit cautious about sort of one thing can solve this. And I know, I know you're not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that. I suppose but, but, going starting with the, with the Panama Papers and the leaks, yeah. um, we now know there's 800 Australian entities of some form or another that have been implicated. Why didn't we catch that before? I suppose that's the question people are asking. Why did, it take, why did it take a big dump and some fantastic investigative journalism to get to that point? Why is the system the way it is that we can't we can't detect these kind of things now? Because countries are sovereign, mm. basically. We and you've got 165 countries, and you only need one to stop out and provide these uh, secrecy services to the world. Mm. So what what we've learned what, what we've learned in the last uh, few years is that what works is. Uh, um, uh, unified political will through the G20, bringing economic and political pressure to bear on uh, large numbers of countries, with the OECD providing the technical uh, uh, the venue where the technical S aspects can be sorted out. <laughs> Having said that, uh, we 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 have introduced a multilateral. Uh, convention on mutual assistance which allows a swapping of information which is a terrific building block for for solving these problems 98 countries have sol signed up to that which is an outstanding performance but it is not the world sure I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the multilateral stuff going on I'm interested in what <laughs> we, we can do as a nation unilaterally to to provide incentives for <coughs> Well, 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 what we are doing is we are we are taking uh, a, a we we are part of a leadership group at the OECD. Okay. I don't want to say we're leading, okay. but we're batting above our uh, our weight, um, and we are uh, we are 
attempting to, to drive the technical solutions and support the G20 in getting political will to make these countries. The, 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 most of the remaining secrecy jurisdictions have recently signed up or have indicated they intend to sign up to the common reporting standard and that will bring them into the ultimate beneficiary uh, work that's uh, about to be launched.